So typically I start off, I do what's called an internal critique when I'm speaking to non-Muslims, whether that be an atheist or whether that be a Christian or wh whoever I'm speaking with. What I do is I figure out what they believe uh, and I use their own words to take them down a line of reasoning. So what I would do is I would start off by stating, okay, if, if you speak a different language than me, we can each write something down on a piece of paper. You can write down the ball is red in Arabic, and I could write it down in English. Now, those two statements themselves are separate from each other in the sense that they are two different languages. So those two statements about the object itself, which is the red ball, those two statements would be meaning the same thing. So when they mean the same thing, that, that meaning itself is called a proposition. So the meaning of the proposition is separate from the statements itself. That's the first thing you need to, to basically get, uh, get them to agree to, is that statements exist. We can write them down or we can verbally speak them about a physical object, and those statements have meanings that they share. So the ball is red. In Arabic or English, it means the same thing. Now, the next place that you would go to after that is asking this, this truth itself, or this proposition, does it have a truth value to it? Is the ball red? It's either true or false. If, the ball, if it is true that the ball is red, then truth itself would exist in reality. That would be the next question that I ask. Does truth exist in reality? If truth does exist in reality, it seems as if there's two different categories that we could put this truth into. One is a physical object. And in that case, if it is a physical object, I would ask the person to hand me a truth. If they are not able to even show me where truth itself can be put under a microscope and not conflate back to the object itself and still only isolate the truth from the proposition and hand me that truth, well, then it would only be able to fit into the other category, which would be a conceptual object. Hello, people. This is Shogat San. I participated in this Discord uh, conversation. Yeah, let's jump into it. First of all, I disagree. Truth is only conceptual. There are two kinds of things we experience in reality. Physical objects, material in other words, and mental concepts, immaterial. Truth is in the second category, a mental concept. We cannot touch or see truth in the world. Truth is just like love, jealousy, a mental concept. Therefore, we need consciousness for truth to exist. And as you will see later on in this discussion, Khalil also agrees with that. As he claims, we need an ultimate consciousness in order to have necessary truths, as he claims, referring to logical absolutes. Conceptual objects, once they agree to that, I would typically ask, are conceptual objects mental things? If conceptual objects are mental things, then concepts are grounded in a mind. You can't have a mental thing without a mind. One of the root words for mental is a mind. So it's necessary for you to have a mind to ground those truths in. So if we've agreed all the way up to here, and we, we said that we can make statements, that statements are separate, that statements, even, even though they are separate, are explaining something similar, explaining the same thing, which is the proposition. That proposition is what we call a truth bearer. It's the thing that bears the truth. So that truth is in, in accordance with the proposition itself. If that truth exists in reality, that truth is a conceptual object because it's obviously not physical. If it's conceptual, concep concepts are mental things, and that's where we've gotten to at this point, that mental things exist. Now, this is where I would throw the red ball away and take a look at something like one plus one equals two. This is what we in philosophy would call a necessary truth or the law of identity that A equals A. These are things that are necessary 
that are necessarily true for existence itself. Khalil claims that logical absolutes, what he calls uh, necessary truths, are necessary for existence itself. That's a wrong statement. There can be existence without minds and therefore without logical absolutes. What he should have said is that logical absolutes are necessary for logic. So if that's true, and let's just go back to the atheist, let's just say he believes in the Big Bang Theory. So at the very beginning, is it true that the singularity was a singularity and not something else? That would be the law of non-contradiction. You could say, yes, okay, it was true that the singularity, while it existed, was what it was, and it wasn't something other than that. If that's the case, then a truth exists. Now, you can tie them back to what they've already agreed to, is that if truth exists, truth is a conceptual thing, conceptual things are mental things, mental things are grounded in minds. If it was true at the singularity, that means there was a mind to ground that truth at the singularity. Regardless of human beings existing, there was a truth to ground that. The argument Khalil is make, makes is, is this. Premise one, we need mind for truth. In other words, we need consciousness for truth. Premise two, in the beginning of the universe, in the singularity, there were some things that were true, although no human minds to conceptualize them. Conclusion, there must be or there must have been an ultimate mind at the beginning of the universe. I disagree. I object with a premise too. I say that without minds, human minds, there wasn't any truth at the beginning of the universe. And let me show you how Khalil agrees with me. He says, we need minds for truth. In the premise one, isn't that right? Okay, so, in the preassumption, in the worldview, that there is no God, that means that there w was no truth in the beginning of the universe. Okay, now, he needs to demonstrate that there was truth in the beginning of the universe. The premise two is unsubstantiated. He just made a statement. He assumes his worldview to prove his worldview. Now, this does not specifically get you to any God, but what it does, it shows the issues of the foundation of grounding truth within a materialistic and or atheistic worldview. Now, typically, a lot of times what we will hear is that um, is that when when they when they see this, they will say, well, it takes a human to conceptualize of things. So then truth does not exist until us humans can come up with the language to conceptualize it. But that would be an issue because then you would say that the truth is contingent or dependent on us being able to make statements. Yet you already admitted, sir, that we need minds for truth. So now you are contradicting yourself. Your argument has a premise that we need minds for truth. Now you say, but that's absurd because that means that uh, truth came because humans conceptualize it. You're, you're contradicting yourself. Okay. You didn't say we need an ultimate mind for truth. You said we need a mind for truth. Which means that nothing was true up until human beings were able to conceptualize, which seems absolutely absurd to me. I believe that rocks were still rocks before humans existed. I believe that if the dinosaurs roamed the earth 65 million years ago, that that those dinosaurs would be dinosaurs and not something else. Wait just a moment. Now you are doing the opposite argument that the, than the one that you were doing a couple of seconds ago. Let me remind you what you were saying a couple of seconds ago. If conceptual objects are mental things, then concepts are grounded in a mind. You can't have a mental thing without a mind. One of the root words for mental is a mind. So it's necessary for you to have a mind to ground those truths in. So truth needs a mind or it's absurd. It doesn't need a mind. What is from those two? 
truth is a concept, so we need minds. Now you say that is absurd, because without minds, how you are contradicting yourself. Anyway, let's continue. And it would be true 65 million years ago. It wouldn't just be true today because we have look back and make observations on fossils and things like that. Sir, you just said a couple of seconds ago that for truth, we need minds. That was where your argument was based on. Okay, did you meant that? Or now it's something else? It doesn't need mind. It's absurd. Okay, that's a huge contradiction, sir. Okay, please, go on. These necessary truths are outside of human minds. So that's basically the argument that I would make is to say that we have statements. Statements have propositions. Propositions are truths. Truths are conceptual. Minds are... Uh, uh, concepts are mental things. Mental things are grounded in minds. If they believe in necessary truths, then they believe in a necessary mind to ground that truth in. Anybody want to add anything right now? Um, we have like two questions in the audience. So would you like to answer those questions? Or Yeah, that's fine. Yeah? I typically okay. find it best to... And it, I, I've laid out the argument... I've, uh, you know, I've, I've laid laid out everything as how I would argue it. So the best way to really learn about how we have these conversations is to have people come on, ask questions, and or push back. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, uh, so uh, we'll ask your questions, uh, so great, son. Yes. Uh, uh, hello, sir. Hello. I am objecting to the statement that truth uh, exists can exist without minds. Maybe it exists. Um, it is true, but without minds, there, there cannot be the concept of truth. I mean, I, this is my objection. I object to that. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with I you. It, I believe that for truth to exist, there needs to be a mind. Yeah, but if we don't have a mind, that doesn't mean that one plus one is not two. There, it's just there isn't a mind to conceptualize that. And moreover, I, I wanted to ask you, do you agree that to, to establish truth, we need to have a reference to reality, to, to the environment? I, th I think you already said that, sir. To establish truth? That, well, let, let's tackle the first thing, yes. the, the, the first issue that you had. And then, then we'll course, move on to yes. that. So, so I agree with you that, we can, that truth cannot exist without a mind. Because con yes. truth, truth is a conceptual thing. Would you agree with that? Yes, of course. Okay. Do you also agree that concepts are mental things? Yes, I agree. Okay. And do you also believe that there are necessary truths, things like one plus one equals two? Yes. About that, the, the necessity, I think that um, you, you this presupposes that consciousness is the fundamental reality and consciousness gives rise to the material world. Isn't that right, sir? No, I would disagree that it presupposes it because I've used an entire line of reasoning to get yes. to this point. So a presupposition but, is not something that you reason to. Okay. It's something you axiomatically assume. One plus one equals two is necessary for logic to work. Okay. Uh, not necessary for the two. universe. So are, are you speaking, when you say one plus one equals two, are you talking about the statement or the description of this necessary truth? Or are you talking about the proposition itself? The concept, but I think this concept, one plus one equals two, is um, descriptive, not inscriptive. Can you understand what I'm saying? That it it mirrors the environment. It's, it mirrors uh, the environment, not it gives, it prescribes the environment. Yeah, so I, I, would, I would say that the statement itself is the, des the descriptive thing. The statement is what's describing the truth itself. We don't need the language of mathematics, whether we use uh, the mathematics that we would agree upon or, or some, you know, some other type of uh, numerical system that you, regardless of how you use that system, it's explaining the same thing, the same meaning. So I don't think that the meaning is descriptive. The meaning is something that exists that we discovered. And when we discovered it, we used these descriptive languages to be able to uh, explain that. I, I feel as if we might be conflating the concept with the description of the statement itself. 
yeah, in, in my view, the mind is scaled in order to recognize patterns that work in a given environment. In other words, in order for the mind to be able to recognize the environment and survive, it has to be scaled. And um, from that fact, because that mirrors the environment, from there de derives numbers. For example, for, from the blunt fact that things can be equal, from there, may, our, our mind is scaled. It takes its scales from the environment. And, be, and because our universe is rationally deductible, so what I'm trying to say, not, not to confuse the things very much, what I'm trying to say is that maybe, maybe the, our mind mirrors the environment. And because our universe is rationally deductible, it's, it's got the bland fact that things can be equal. In other words, um, it, um, it's not chaos. Okay, so there are patterns in our universe. That's why our mind, maybe it's, go, it's getting in scales from the environment. That is what I'm trying to say. Although that's, uh, um, maybe, sir, you need to continue to, to, uh, to, to express your whole argument, and then we can uh, discuss that, because I know I, um, I'm taking you away from your... Yeah, no, your no, no. So, so what, what I think we're doing here is, is that we're, we're making the human mind itself one of the hinge pins for for truth because we keep going back to how we conceptualize things in the descriptions that we make the whole crux of this argument is based on necessary truths truths that would be true regardless of if human beings existed but i would agree with you that even if human beings existed if truth is a conceptual thing and concepts yeah. are mental things and human beings nor any other life existed at a specific yeah. time and things were still true at that time that I don't see how you would be able to get around saying that there was a mind to ground these concepts in. Yes, but, but exactly. I don't believe things are true without consciousness. I don't think the concept of truth is a, is a mental concept. It's a concept. Are, are I don't not, think. Are you not presupposing that there wasn't a mind prior to human beings? Yes, uh, um, yes, that, because that's my worldview. I'm an atheist there, so I don't believe there is a mind in the center of, of the universe. So then, so, how do you explain ab how do you explain necessary truths prior to life? Exactly, it's not it's not it's not truth unless there is a mind to conceptualize. Because truth is like like we say jealousy. So we cannot say jealousy existed without minds. Mm -hmm. Can you say, although, although when, now that we, the, the problem with that is that when we are thinking about this, we are already thinking with our minds. So we are, can you, can you, can you say what I'm saying? So we say one plus one is two, e, e, um, even without minds, but that's because we are already using our minds to think that. But without minds in the universe, there is no concept of truth. Sure. All. So uh, if, since you're presupposing that without human beings, minds don't exist then that means that anything prior to human beings would not be true. Is that correct? Yes, with, yeah, exactly. Without consciousness. Okay, so exactly. when we describe history, history was not true. And it was not true that these things occurred until yeah. human beings can later, add, 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 post hoc, go back and, and explain these things. Yes, because truth is a, is a concept of the mind. No, what I'm trying to say is that when we, when we get the mind, when we put the mind in the universe, then we, we understand that this was uh, always true. Okay? But without the mind, the, the truth, the, truth makes no meaning. It's a concept. Without minds, truth makes no meaning. That doesn't uh, say that... Um, how, can I say, how can I explain that? I'm trying to find the most efficient way. Um, although one plus one equals two was always true, mm -hmm. but that's a statement of a mind. That's a statement of a mind. Without the mind, I cannot make this statement that one plus one was always true. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I feel it's as if you're contradicting yourself. And let me let me just explain where I where I see this apparent contradiction at is that you stated yes. that that truth only exists when human beings conceptualize can conceptualize of history and when they conceptualize of history they see that these truths were always true guys first of all this was a new argument for me 
surprisingly, I haven't heard it before. <laughs> The, uh, what they did is they took the, uh, the contingency argument and they superimposed it to truth. Okay, that's brilliant. Okay, I, I give you that. It's a, it's a brilliant argument. But for me, that was the first time I've, I've heard this argument. So I, I wasn't so confident. I, didn't, I, I was trying to conceptualize at this moment. What I was trying to say is this. Imagine the red brain is Khalil's brain, okay, and he thinks we need we need uh, minds for truth. But wait just a moment. Even if we exclude minds, again, one plus one equals two. In this hypothesis, for example, in the beginning of the universe, the law of non-contradiction, in other words, A cannot be not A still applies. Why is that? Because of this mind. And you already accept this concept because if we need God, the mind of God for logical absolutes, then if we don't have the mind of God, that means there are no logical absolutes. Okay, so you already accept this concept that without minds there are no concepts. Although there are weird scientific experiments in physics that suggest consciousness might even have a cosmological effect, like uh, Schrodinger's cat or the double slit experiment, I am not claiming that consciousness literally affects the natural world. He imagined taking a cat and placing it in a sealed box with a device that had a 50% chance of killing the cat in the next hour. At the end of that hour, he asked, what is the state of the cat? Common sense suggests that the cat is either alive or dead, but Schrodinger pointed out that according to quantum physics, at the instant before the box is opened, the cat is equal parts alive and dead at the same time. It's only when the box is opened that we see a single definite state. Until then, the cat is a blur of probability, half one thing and half the other. I am not claiming that because that's a scientific mystery exactly because is a contradiction. So that's, that's why it's a scientific mis mystery. And we will most probably find a rational explanation why that happens eventually. So I'm not claiming that. I'm not claiming, in other words, that consciousness literally affects the natural world. My argument is, in contradiction to Khalil and whoever else thinks we need consciousness to prescribe logical absolutes, in this case, uh, God's consciousness, in contradiction to that, I claim logical absolutes are de descriptive, not uh, prescriptive. So I claim that logical absolutes are descriptive of the natural world, not prescriptive. Even without minds, a rock will still be a rock simply because that's a blunt fact of nature, of the natural world. So even if we don't have minds, the rock exists, okay? And the rock is a rock. But why is that? Because that's a blunt fact of the natural world, not because a mind prescribed that. Is just description, okay? So, without minds, although a rock is still a rock because of the, a blunt fact of the natural world, the concept of truth doesn't exist. This is what I am claiming. Okay. So, if the truths were always true, then there was yeah. no beginning of the truth for these necessary truths that we're talking about, like the laws of logic, non, the law of non-contradiction, or one plus one equals two. Yeah. So uh, on one hand, you're saying it requires human beings to make these truths begin to exist. And then on the other hand, you're also saying that these truths have always existed. I'm not sure how these truths can begin to exist and not begin to exist. I say that truth 
no, I'm not. I'm never said that truth always existed. I'm, I'm, I said that truth is a concept, and concept only makes sense after we have minds. Okay, e even if that concept goes beyond the mind, the the mind, and it can say, can recognize what happened before. That doesn't mean that without minds that was true, because truth has no meaning without man minds. It's a mental concept. But what I'm, uh, else I would like to notice is that. Uh, you, you, that the the way you are thinking, you assume that con consciousness is the the says the the initial the initial essence, is the fundamental reality. You are you are claiming that consciousness is the fundamental reality, but we know that for something to be true, it, it doesn't need to have only a, a, a sound. Um, an internally consistent logic, logic, but it also needs to relate to the environment. The environment uh, defines truth. Do you uh, um, accept that, sir? Yes, I, I agree with that. So the environment would be the state of affairs of the physical yeah. world at the time that these things existed. But there, at, there's been specific times prior to, if for you as an atheist, I would believe maybe 200,000 years ago. I think the number just recently changed, but I don't exactly know what that is. So let's just say human beings came about 200,000 years ago, Homo sapiens. Um, prior, prior to Homo sapiens having a rational mind to be able to conceptualize of these ideas, then truth never actually existed. But you would state that we would find out that some of these truths like the singularity or the expansion of the universe has been happening for 13.8 billion years. Let's go back to five seconds after like 13.8 billion years without in five seconds. So five seconds after the expansion, was it true at that time? Not now that we can conceptualize of it, but was it true at that time, five seconds after the expansion, that the universe was in fact expanding. If that is true, and we've already agreed that con concepts like truths are mental things, and we also already agreed that minds are necessary, then it wouldn't be a presupposition that minds exist. It would be a line of logic stating that these truths no, that we do no. say are true could not possibly exist without a necessary mind to ground them in five yeah. seconds after the expansion. Exactly, but but even what you are saying now is demonstrating that what you say is not true. You are saying that in the case of God, we need a mind that precedes the mind of humans. That is like admitting that we need an, a mind for truth. Isn't that right? Because you you in 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 effect you already admitted that you said we need the mind of God to define truth. That means that we need minds. I haven't said for God truth. yet. Yeah, but you assumed an, an ultimate uh, consciousness. I haven't assumed anything. I've given a line of reasoning that you've agreed okay. with toward the logical entailment, the logical conclusion yeah. of that line you, of reasoning you said, is you, a necessary you said, mind. You said some kind of consciousness must underline the universe in order to define truth uh, without the human mind. Isn't that right? Isn't I that said, what you said? According to what we've already agreed upon, that statements exist, yeah. that propositions are the meanings of those statements, that propositions have truths, that truths are conceptual, concepts are mental, mental things yeah. need minds. Khalil said that in the singularity, in the beginning of the universe, there was truth, like the law of non-contradiction. And th his argument is that because of that fact, that means there is an ultimate consciousness god in other words that defines that brings the logical absolute but when he says that he admits that we necessarily need consciousness for concepts okay so it's uh, what i'm saying is that why an ultimate consciousness and not just human consciousness if you already accept that we necessarily need consciousness for truth why you then say we need an ultimate consciousness and not human consciousness why uh, you know uh, why why this qualification of an ultimate consciousness and not simply consciousness you never substantiated that so then I got you to agree that necessary truths, in fact, do exist. 
And then now huh. that the logical entailment of that is that there's a mind that's always been around to ground these truths that have always been around. You seem to say that I'm presupposing it now. Yeah. What I'm, what, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that you, that you are, you are part of the experiment. You are part of the experiment because now you are conscious and you are thinking these things. So if, if we take you out of the equation, mm -hmm. there will not be anyone to think what you thought now, to think about the past. Okay, so this is my objection. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Okay, I, yeah, I, I, I just, I okay. just think that, that we keep going back to human minds and we're not focusing but, on, you know, yeah, but, prior, uh, prior to human beings. And I, and I think we're just gonna keep going around in circles. Oh, yeah, maybe, yes. Um, what, what I was, one last question. You sure. use the, the, the term necessary. Mm -hmm. the, the term necessary in the contingency argument refers to cosmology. Now, the necessary you use about consciousness, you mean necessary to, to make logic? No, when I'm saying necessary, I mean it could not be any other way. So, for example, for a if necessary is is part of what's called modal logic. So it's not part of cosmology. I'm not I'm explaining a philosophical sure. term, not a not a cosmological <laughs> term. So I'm saying that necessary in the way that I'm using it philosophically means that in all possible worlds this thing must exist and could not possibly in, be otherwise. No, the the logical absolutes, we need logical absolutes in order to make to make logic. But that doesn't mean the logical absolutes are Ne are an, an, an SST. For example, in a, um, in a universe that it was chaos, the, it, it didn't have any order, then logical absolutes, of course, it will make uh, sense in a scaled mind, but they won't, make, they won't have any reference in the environment. Anyway, thank you. Uh, I will, maybe I will come back later to ask some uh, other question. Sure. Okay, thank you very much. Sir. Thanks for the conversation. Khalil claims <clears throat> logical absolutes could not have been any other way. A equals A in all possible worlds. I disagree. Let's imagine a world without minds. A is not A. Although a rock is still a rock, simply from the descriptive bland fact that things can be equal, in the natural world, still the concept of, of A doesn't exist. Khalil already accepted that when he said we need God's mind for logical absolutes. Therefore, his argument fails. Yes, sir. Uh, as, as I understood, you are using this um, argument with consciousness to prove the existence of God, but I didn't get how that leads. So I, I, I didn't get how that leads to the existence of God. Yeah, so I don't believe this argument itself, and I said this at the very beginning. I don't believe this argument proves God or anything like that, nor any specific God. The only the only point to this argument is to show that there was a necessary mind to conceptualize and ground necessary truths. That's the only thing that I'm arguing right now. Ah, okay. So, because uh, sometimes I make the argument that if God, if God comes to Earth and says uh, something that doesn't relate to the environment, that, that that contradicts the environment, for example, if God comes to Earth and says an elephant can fit through a mouse hole, that is a wrong statement. What I'm trying to say is that God can make wrong statements relating to the environment. So maybe the environment defines truth and not God. So I believe that God can do anything that's logically possible, and we need to make a, a, a distinction between what's logically possible and metaphysically possible. I feel like a lot of times people conflate those two things together and think that if it if it violates the laws of physics or the laws of nature, then it most definitely and necessarily violates the laws of logic, to which I would absolutely uh, vehemently disagree with that and state that things like, for example, if we were to bring up the splitting of the moon, is that it's yeah. logically possible for the moon to be split in half and be put back together. 
for you to show that it's logically impossible, you would have to draw a contradiction from it, as in saying that the moon was split and also not split simultaneously. That would be a logical contradiction. Uh, okay. But but it may seem as if it violates the laws of physics, but that is not outside the bounds of God. If you would like to jump to talking about God, I mean, that's that's fine. But what I'm just I'm just making it clear that this argument I'm presenting is one step in many steps that I would that I would have have with an atheist to get to the existence of God, specifically and especially the personal God that I currently believe in. In, in other words, you need you should, all right. Okay, let, let's return. Although in the previous argument, a, a hypothesis doesn't need to happen in the real world in order to demonstrate truth. For example, God doesn't need, in fact, to contradict anything. We are just making a hypothesis. A anyway, what I'm trying to say is that the environment, we see that the environment defines truth, not, not uh, opinions or uh, consciousness. But in any way, so you said that we necessarily, you made an argument that we, we necessarily need cons uh, an um, ultimate consciousness to define the logical absolutes. Isn't that right? Uh, yeah. No, to, to ground necessary truths, you need a necessary mind. Yeah, but um, maybe th th that implies that uh, this that uh, th those are inscriptive, not descriptive, because maybe those are just descriptions of reality. For for a fa for example, the mere blunt fact that things can be equal and our universe can be ordered, in other words it can uh, separate itself from chaos, maybe the, this blunt fact it, the, uh, gave rise to the logical absolutes. And our mind, because uh, our mind was evolved to recognize patterns in the environment in order to survive, it, it is scaled in relation to the, order, to the order of the universe. What I'm trying to say is that... Um, we don't need ontology. Maybe it may, maybe ontology takes a scale. Maybe it's just description of uh, cosmology. Maybe it mirrors cosmology. For example, let um, it, it, let's let me make a um, a definition of truth, and and you can tell me if if that's a wrong definition. Truth is the mental concept of things that work in a given environment. Or we can take the dictionary definition that says truth is uh, what corresponds to reality. Reality is the environment. Isn't yes, that I right? I, I, would, I would go with the, the, the latter. I would say the truth is that which corresponds to reality. Yeah, but reality is the physical world. Reality is, a, for example, I might the, the, the Lord of the Rings movie is logically consistent, although it's not true. Mm -hmm. But inside the concept of the movie, it's logically consistent. They have a ring, they want to go to some mountain to throw it, I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, we, we might have a logically consistent uh, lo uh, lo uh, logic, but it needs to relate to the environment. Always the environment is the, is the factor that defines truth. Yeah, so hold on, let's back up a bit. You said that... that, yeah. that, um, that reality is the physical world correct yeah so when we say that things exist within reality are yeah. we saying that things exist within themselves things exist within themselves because if the physical objects are reality then they don't exist within the reality they they just are reality you wouldn't say that a tree exists within our reality you wouldn't be able to say that because you would be yeah. drawing a distinction between ah. the physical world yeah. and what we call reality uh, obviously reality is not the just the physical world or also consciousness is, is part of this universe so mm -hmm. consciousness is also a reality mm -hmm. okay that is how uh, i don't believe in other words i don't believe consciousness uh, it's, it's above the universe. It's just another phenomenon inside the universe. This is our, uh, where we disagree. You think that consciousness is, is inscriptive? This is the, the uh, ultimate reality. You put in the center consciousness. This is the ultimate reality that everything else comes from this. I put in the center 
um, the physical world and consciousness derives from the physical world and it mirrors the physical world and from there it takes its case. So this is our, our difference um, in opinion. In a sense, yes, you, you put in the center consciousness, I put in the center the world, the, the natural world. Okay, that was my point. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, I simply I, I simply would say that the, the consciousness itself that you would agree is part of the non physical reality, um, would would no. be would be where the truth lays, where to we to be the, the propositions that exist in that non material reality is where the truth is, and those truths are descriptive of the physical reality. Yeah. They are descriptive, but but e even let's say uh, let's say the wrong uh, concept of um, the, the wrong equation one plus one equals three. Again, if we say so, it's not about truth; it's about recognition. Because even in the in in a wrong equation like one plus one equals three, we can say that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's again a true statement. Mm -hmm. So. So maybe the, the, this kinds of is, is is just descriptions, accurate description. We take a concept and we relate that to a meaning. For example, we say jealousy is this definition. So they seem to be absolutes because we we give them we um, uh, we relate. So we we relate concepts with our minds. So we say uh, A is A. So obviously that is A, because we say A is A. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. This is um, okay. Yeah, I, I still think we're we're conflating the physical world with the truths itself. Uh, I, I just I I don't know where else to go with you, uh, Socrates, son. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Not a Thank problem. You. Yeah, I, I'm not sure where else we could go from there unless we have yeah, yeah. A, unless we have a agreement on concepts existing uh, mentally and that fallible um, how would I how would I say um, dependent minds or or contingent minds like our own are not sufficient to house or to ground these necessary truths that are always true as long as there's things that exist. Uh, if any type of existence exists, yeah. then you would need something mental to ground it in. I just don't see how we could get around that. Yeah, but, but I, I already said that I don't believe truth makes sense without minds. So you pre-assume that uh, without minds, there is also a truth. Okay, so this is where we fundamentally dis disagree. But I don't, I cannot think right now how that, that can be solved, that how we can prove either way. I cannot think anything on the spot. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Last two guys who were on before uh, Intellectual came on, um, they kept uh, um, getting stuck um, in, in the discussion with you. And they kept uh, uh, sticking to this point about a truth needs to be necessarily connected with a physical object. But... That's not true. And I'm not sure why they kept getting stuck on it because you kept making the point that you can make a true claim or a, uh, or a proposition about an abstract idea, like one plus one equals two. There's no physical objects connected to that proposition. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what they were getting caught up on. If you can make a proposition about an abstraction, then wh what's the whole... Uh, uh, you know, problem with this whole, they, they kept like, connect, like saying, well, it's, it's connected to something physical. I'm not, am I, you know, was I misunderstanding them or, no, or were they? You're, you're hitting the nail on the head. Um, that's why I kept going back to let's talk about necessary truths. I start off with something simple, like the ball is red, but once we get down the line and we say, okay, co uh, concepts exist, concepts are, um, are, uh, concepts are uh, mental things. If concepts are mental things, let's look at necessary truths. If these truths are concepts and these things are necessary, then there's no physical matter for these truths to be grounded in. They're just true conceptually. And if that's the case, then th there's, no, there's no object to really tie it back to. And that's when they kept going to more examples of physical objects existing. So you're, you're absolutely correct. 
yeah, it's just it was it was just so frustrating. I can't <laughs> believe the amount of patience you're exhibiting right now because the reality is you can just throw all the descriptive uh, propositions out the door. Okay, just talk about abstractions then and make a proposition about something abstract, something not, not connected to anything physical, and let's carry the conversation from that point on. So they can't keep going back to something physical, which they're mm -hmm. stuck on for some reason. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, I, I, I'm not always, uh, I, I would say that six months ago when I was an atheist, uh, you could ask some of my my friends that I've dealt with for the last two years on Facebook calls that I have not been as calm as I am now. Uh, uh, alhamdulillah, I think uh, I think Allah has granted me patience that I didn't used to have, um, and I feel as if uh, if I'm going to be uh, a figure that is going to be giving dawah in the name of Allah, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that I should show some type of uh, self control, if you will. So I, I I've I've learned to keep myself calm and to um and to and, and to think. I think there's a there's a statement that says. Um, never attribute uh, malice to where you can attribute ignorance. Not all mental concepts mirror physical objects. That's true. Yet, the environment defines truth. Let's take the example you gave. 1 plus 1 equals 2. Yet, in a quantum environment, we use probabilities and not rational numbers to define things, exactly because we have the counterintuitive quantum qualities. Our brain that gave rise to our mind was evolved in a rationally deductible universe. The fact that the universe is ordered and it's not chaos gave the ability of our mind to recognize patterns that work in a given environment in order to survive. Even the mind of animals can detect patterns in the environment and avoid harmful behaviors like, for example, jump through a cliff. <laughs> Numbers mirror or reflect the order in our mind, not the environment. That's why they apply in all possible worlds. If we assume us being inside these worlds. But how we have order or why we have order? Do we need God for order? No. The bland fact that things can be equal gives the possibility of order in the universe. Can we imagine a universe where things can be equal, not having numbers? How is that possible? Because, okay, we have equal things. We have one thing, then another thing. How we will call that? Two. Then we have another thing, equal. How we will call that? Three. If we divide one thing, how we will call that? Okay, so numbers mirror the order in our mind. And the order in our mind came about from the environment. That is what I'm claiming. I'm not claiming that all mental concepts relate to physical objects. I'm claiming that the order in our mind was evolved from a rationally deduct deductible ordered universe.